Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So it is just a housework kind of day today. I've been working here most of the day in the kitchen and now I'm doing my ironing. Um, and I know that for some people ironing is a four letter word and someone commented on that in a video the other day. But for me, I find ironing to just be incredibly relaxing and peaceful. I thoroughly enjoy it. It is probably my favorite house chore. And I will find myself when I'm really on a roll, I will iron everything in my pile. And then I'll even go to my clothes rack, my closet and go, hmm, what else needs to be ironed? And I'll just iron everything I can. Like I said, it's my most relaxing chore. I enjoy it. So like I said, it's been a busy day today. I've been just doing some all around housework here in the kitchen. I put up my preserves that I did yesterday, my apple blueberry barbecue sauce. Did that this morning. I tidied up the counter, wiped everything down, rearranged a little bit over by the coffee maker. I refilled my brown sugar bucket because I ran out of brown sugar the other day, uh, actually when I started that barbecue sauce. And so I had to mix up another batch of that. Making homemade brown sugar is incredibly easy. It is basically just an eight to one ratio of sugar and molasses. And you can adjust it according to flavor, add a little bit more molasses for a darker version, a little bit less for a lighter brown sugar. But you just combine the two in your mixer and just let it go for a minute or two until it's fully combined. And there you go, brown sugar. I've had a couple questions recently about this apron the one that I have on here. This is the first apron of this design that I made. I made this apron a long time ago, the first year we lived in Alaska. And I had found this fabric with this cute chicken design on it in one of the uh, kind of remnant baskets, I think at Joanne Fabric a long time ago because I had had this fabric for quite a while before I ever made this apron. I just knew that someday I wanted to make something out of this cute chicken fabric. I didn't know what, but I think I got it for, I don't know, maybe two or three dollars. And I thought for that price, I'm gonna make something out of it. And I just hung on to it. And then one day I came up with this idea of a cross back apron just a simple rectangle with two straps that crisscross in the back. I wouldn't have to worry about tying my apron on or, or anything like that. And before that time, I had never seen an apron quite like it. I just thought I had made it up out of my head. And then one day, somebody commented on how much they loved my Japanese style apron. And I thought, Japanese style apron? There is such a thing? Well, I looked it up and lo and behold, sure enough, this apron that I had come up with years ago was called a Japanese style apron. When we moved to our farmhouse in Alabama, 
I had a bunch of people comment on the apron and I thought, well, you know what? Well, how about I just make some and I'll sell them. And I did that for a little bit, but that was when we had just moved to our homestead in Alabama and it did not take long for life to get full and I just didn't have time to be sewing aprons to maintain a shop on Etsy. And honestly, I can sew, but sewing isn't something I take pleasure from. To me, it is a skill to have and know how to do to fix things or make things that you need. And it's for me, it's just not a hobby. And so I really couldn't see myself dedicating a lot of time to making aprons to maintain a shop. And so what I did a couple years ago is I made an apron and I took everyone through the steps, the process of making this apron. And I showed how you can make one of these aprons. You don't need a pattern. You just need a yardstick or some way to measure fabric, cut it in rectangles, iron the edges, sew them together and voila. And that video is here on my channel as well as print instructions on my website. And amazingly, to this day, that is my most popular video here on YouTube. It was kind of shocking, actually. I, I did have several people later on ask me how to modify the pattern for different sizes, how to make it littler for kids or bigger for fluffy ladies. And so I did a second video and I showed how to measure and kind of work out a, a size that would give you what you were looking for. The great thing about this apron and most aprons is that it is flexible in the size because of the crisscross and it's a loose fitting apron. So you don't have to worry about ties being just the right length or anything like that. But I have always enjoyed aprons. I have a lot of them. And I will tell you, there's something for me about throwing on an apron and turning on my music that makes me incredibly productive. If I want to have a day where I get a lot done, that's pretty much all I got to do. And I'm just going to be busy, busy, busy. I don't know what it is, but the apron and the music does it for me every time. Of course, there are momentary pauses for enjoying the music. And I don't mind an occasional interruption to dance around with the grandbaby either. Someone asked me the other day if there had been any mountaintop videos that I had posted recently. And you know, I haven't really been up to the top of the mountain a whole lot this summer just because it was so incredibly hot. But I did go up there a couple of weeks ago with a friend of mine that was here visiting. And we just really enjoyed hiking up there, sitting on the bench, enjoying the view and having a conversation. It is such a beautiful, beautiful spot and I really do look forward to spending time up there as the weather cools down. I imagine when the leaves start turning colors here in the mountains of Arkansas, that view is going to be breathtaking. I also wanted to mention, while I had your attention, that if you are not subscribed to my email newsletter, it is probably the best way to make sure you don't miss anything that's happening here at the homestead. Whether it's on my website, new recipes, etc., or videos on the YouTube channel. Because social media tends to not be very reliable. As an example, the other day I found myself in Instagram jail. 
I was not allowed to comment on anyone's post. And I, for the life of me, I couldn't understand why. I hadn't even been on Instagram all day. I hadn't posted anything. I hadn't talked to anybody. What could I have possibly done that made Instagram so angry with me? You know, Instagram told me that I wouldn't be able to post until the following day. But the following day had come and most of the day had gone and I still could not make any kind of comments at all. I could still post but I couldn't comment on anyone's Instagram pages or Instagram posts, including my own. So I had a couple people I had been trying to respond to, wasn't able to do it because Instagram put me in Instagram jail. And the following evening, I was contemplating what in the world could I have done that would have caused this to happen. And so that evening I was thinking about it and a light bulb went off. I remembered that the day before all of this happened, I had seen someone share something on Instagram in a story, and I thought, hmm, that's an interesting person. I should follow their account. And so I went to their account, and I went to hit follow, and when I did, Instagram gave me the bold red lettered, are you sure you want to follow this account? Because this account posts things that we have deemed misinformation or false information, whatever they call it. And I said, yes, I want to follow them anyways. And so I did. And I realized that was the last thing that I had done on my Instagram account that, that day. And the next time I went to post something or, or make a comment, that's when I had been banned. So I spent about an hour or so that night scrolling through trying to remember the name of the account that I had followed because I wanted to see what would happen if I unfollowed them because to that point I still was in Instagram jail. Well after about an hour of searching I found that account. I unfollowed the account, went to my page and magically just like that I was able to comment again. So if you want to make sure that you know what's going on here at the homestead, I highly recommend making sure that you are subscribed to my email newsletter because it is the only means of communication that I actually have control over because I own it. <laughs> I pay for it. And speaking of email, I just want to mention one more time, if you have joined the Cornbread Crew and you have not sent me an email yet, Please do so because I have, I think, two people left who have joined the crew, but I have not received an email from them and I cannot send them their goodies until I have their address. So if you are one of those few people, I hope to hear from you soon. All right, friends, I'm going to finish up my ironing and then I'm going to work on a canning recipe which will be coming up here on the channel before too long. And I think you will like it because the flavors of it are going to be perfect for fall.